Hey there! It's Ilze P here with my Friday video. But today I'm going to do something different because I'm going to interview someone. I'm going to have a guest and my guest will be a Latvian translator Liene Lielmane. So I'm hoping you'll enjoy this video interview and if you know someone who is Latvian and who knows English and who would know interesting stories to tell about his or her profession, let me know. Hey, Liana, so happy to have you here. Thank you so much for taking your time. I know how busy you are. Hi, Elsie. Thank you for having me here. Because you were my first mentor, actually, in, in, in this field of practice, and I am grateful for that. And it's nice that uh, we can cooperate again. So I'm going to simply ask you about how your life has been, but also going back to the history, because I have some history why I started learning English, why I actually chose English as my profession, because that was my, that's my background profession. I'm actually a linguist, and I studied English language and literature but the reason why I started studying English, and that was when I was real, really young, it was probably when I was 10 or 12 years old, and I saw a Russian movie that in Russian is called Equipage, and you would translate it in English as The Crew, and um, it was about uh, love between a flight attendant, uh, Tatiana, and there was a, a pilot, I think, or mechanic, and they were in love, and they were on international flights, and Tatiana knew some English, and I saw that there was an opportunity, if you are on international flights, you can actually flee, you can leave the Soviet Union, and that was my motivation to start learning English independently. It was really, really hard because I didn't really hear English anywhere. I, 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 I learned it basically from books and from the transcription, how it should be pronounced. So, and now when I teach Latin, as you know, I also ask people why, what's their motivation for learning Latin. But now after this uh, long introduction, I would like to ask you, why did you choose to study English? Actually, to paraphrase, I didn't study English. Actually, I, I studied translation sciences. And this is something a little bit different from philology. It's, of course, it goes under the same category, uh, linguistics. But the whole learning process is not uh, devoted only to study the language itself, uh, uh, but, but uh, the, the, the translation studies are actually uh, are more oriented uh, how we satisfy the target reader or listener uh, rather than uh, research all the particularities of one or another language. That's, that's the difference. What I mean is that actually in this translation field we have to distinguish two things, that there are professionals who, who bring the content to the reader and are called the translators and also the ones who bring the content to the listener and, the, and those are called interpreters as you know because right. very right. great very great history together but actually this was the end of my interpreter career because i understood that this uh, this is not for me it's quite um exhausting mentally and physically you are tired and actually i i, I prefer to to to, to work on the text and then uh, have time to think how it's found better because uh, at those uh, interpreting services you don't have a time you have to shoot out what you hear in another language <laughs> and, and i'm still listening to the interpreters and actually it's it's, it's hard job yeah right right yeah but but uh, so anyway where where was that? Uh, where did you get that interest into translation? What prompted you to do it? Uh, it was back in two thousand and two when I when I graduated the the school and uh, actually it was trendy in that time to come translator. Uh, yeah, I found a very um, very popular college at that time. It was in a small city, so I could escape the capital city with busy streets and noises from 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 <laughs> well, from countryside. For me, uh, the capital city Riga was too big, and, and 
and I found a solution, very great solution. It was a small city, Ventspils. Yeah, it was very great four years there. And I returned there for the master's uh, as well. Uh, if you remember that time, actually, uh, we were translating from dictionaries, not from the computers like now. And we all, all just started uh, using computers in translation environment. And uh, it was so exciting. <laughs> you know what? When I started translating, uh, at the beginning, actually, uh, my first job was translating books. And uh, uh, when I was in the editing house, in publishing house, I could work on uh, the PC. But I also had private clients sometimes, not, not very often. And I didn't have a PC at home. And how we translated was we translated writing by hand. So that's, that's, that's the time that I have lived through. Yeah. No, actually, I already graduated as the translator who knows how to translate on the computer. <laughs> I also remember when I started to work, uh, I didn't have an internet at home. I didn't have a fax. I didn't have anything. Just yeah. And if you remember that we started with the, uh, the trans translation programs. Uh, right, right, yes. Yes, that yes. <laughs> time we started with that. Yes, that, that, that was time you, you, you were my mentor. <laughs> right, I remember that. So it just, yeah, it just not... Uh, Luckily, that was a time when we already worked on, trans uh, on computers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, so such such fun to remembering these things. Okay, I have I have more questions for you. So, so you've been working as a translator all these years. Do you still like working as a translator? And what you like about it, if you do? First of all, uh, I'm freelancer. What does it mean? It means that nobody. Uh, I don't have a boss, right? I'm boss myself, and that's the best thing. In yeah, I'm freelancer, and during these years, I have found the way uh, how I can be more productive. The hours when I'm the best to do the job, and if you have uh, this uh, possibility to be uh, free on what you are doing, then you came more creative. And I believe you'll say you will agree with me, and a lot of people around there. So it's, it's a basically time management and like before we started this conversation you said that you are a very down-to-earth uh, kind of a person but um, yes I think that we all think that how we can make our lives more efficient, uh, efficient and really now I live in the United States and people lose so much time on their way to work sometimes more than an hour even so yeah that's definitely a benefit of being um, a freelancer that you can work from your home and um, more and more and more companies actually allow their employees to work from home also it's not always necessary to be at their workplaces although even if uh, their employees are not um, freelancers yeah, that's that's uh, where I think the world is moving towards and you know what I was preparing to ask you is there anything that you would not uh, would like people to know about the translation profession but you already revealed to to, to me what do you think it is but maybe there's a, something else do you, do you think that uh, people are not um, informed about something that they should be informed about uh, when we think about translators and translation industry um. Yeah, people uh, think that it's so easy to take a text and just simply to transfer it to another language, and that's all. Everybody can do it, but actually, this is not the truth. Because actually, we are working on very complicated uh, translation programs. We, we are like technical gurus, actually. I would uh, like to add that translators do a lot of technical stuff, not only in translation programs, but also we do testings, for example, on the programs, on the phones, how, uh, how the language is rendered. At their, it's quite... Well, yeah, spoken language is not exactly the same language that, uh, that the written language is. That's so true. And you know what? Being able to, yeah, being able to be fluent in one language doesn't mean that you can translate and vice versa. It's interesting that I remember I, I worked so much on, on those legal texts 
back home, back in Latvia. See how I, I called it home, although my home is oh. in the United States right now. But I, remember when I, I started living here and I started having friends and neighbors and getting involved in those communities and uh, conversing by email. And sometimes I wrote emails uh, and shared them with my husband. And, and he said, nobody talks like that. You speak you speak like a lawyer, They're like <laughs> make it more simple. So I sounded like a lawyer at the beginning when I was communicating by a simple email. Oh my gosh. So I, have to, I, have to, I, have to, I had to learn to speak and communicate differently. Yeah, that, that's the, the thing I'm always been afraid of to talk with the foreigners. Uh, I have always been afraid that I won't understand them because actually I am using technical. Right, yeah. I know that, I know that feeling, yes. You're so, so uh, getting used to certain types of text and certain types of language and you are not so sophisticated at, um, in other uh, areas of, so to say, life. And yeah, and if, if they if they say me some kind of different phrases or or, yeah. or also I'm I'm just surprised. I'm translator. I know English. Yes, <laughs> I don't know anything sometimes. Right. Yes, <laughs> but I can you talk to little children, for instance, right? I remember yeah, I'm yes. afraid of meeting little children because I was thinking I wouldn't know how to talk to children. <laughs> so what do you think uh, what makes a good translator does it the, do you have to be perfect or how would you define a good translator oh dear Yosa, nobody is perfect no <laughs> we can so try a good be... translator mm -hmm. a good translator yeah you have to be first of all reliable because uh, right. client and the client have um, has the deadline, and that's the one of the most important things in the translation. But if you agree with the client on the deadline, then you have to have to comply with that. What else makes a good translator? It's uh, ability to plan your time. You have to be a good manager. A manager of the others or of yourself uh, a manager of yourself you have to be a very perfect on your computer you know where the things are placed you have to be fast you have to find the right things in the right moment mm -hmm. and um, <clears throat> you have to uh, actually you have to be an accountant as well yeah you have to be a good manager you have to have a very good skills in talking with your clients because uh, it's also important how you answer to your emails. Right. You, you have to be polite, you have to be diplomatic, and you right. know, yeah, that's very important. That's Actually. how I remember you from the first conversation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. A very big part of that is communication. Right, yes. Uh, how you uh, bring this message to your target audience, it's very important. Right. Yeah. But, have. Okay, so I, I'd like to bring this conversation to the end, but has there been anything that you wanted to talk about and I didn't ask you about? What did you ask to me? Hmm, I have to think. Uh, yes, I wanted to talk about my uh, challenging workplaces. The first, first one was highway, when my husband was driving with one 180 kilometers per hour <laughs> and computer and voice. Uh, the highway was in Germany, nothing around. I was waiting for Alps. Yeah, then I will have a very beautiful views. But then at that moment, nothing was um, going on around. So I, I uh, wanted to use my time. Another place, airplane. <laughs> <laughs> Two months ago, first time in an airplane. I so thought, what I'm doing, I'm eight, eight kilometers up and I'm sitting with a computer. <laughs> so, yeah, and I also use the time when I'm sitting at the doctor. You can, uh, you can um, use it in a very productive way. Why not? Yes, right. That's a blessing of our, of our profession. And it's also a curse because your mind is always <laughs> yes. in those translations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Linda, thank you so much. It was fun talking to you again. This was the first time after so many years we 
talked in English, so it was fun. I hope so, and thank you so much for inviting and, and giving me questions. So yeah, it's, it's, right. it's always nice to talk about my work. Actually, not so many are asking me about that. Maybe that's that I'm sitting at home and nobody sees me. Maybe that's 